There are two types of trust that we can talk about. There are revocable trusts. Revocable trusts are used primarily to avoid probate and also, to, and the reason why most people want to avoid probate, well, two reasons. One, cost and time, because you're usually tied up in probate for a minimum of six months. But two, which most people don't realize is, in most states, when you have a probate, you have to present an inventory of all of your assets, which is now filed in court. So a lot of people don't like the idea that when they die, someone can go to the county courthouse and see exactly what they died with. By using a revocable trust, you avoid that disclosure. It also works well in the, if once a spouse is disabled, that it automatically names who's going to be there to take care of the surviving spouse to pay their bills and handle all of their financial matters. A revocable trust is revocable. It can be changed at any time. Therefore, if you have a revocable trust, you only use your Social Security number. It does not have a separate ID number. One of the other things that we've been, we use revocable trust for is, today, the society, marriage is not what it, the nuclear family is not what it was. And you have straight and gay couples who buy real estate together who are not married. The idea of having them have a revocable trust that specifies if someone put up more of down payment, they get their money out first specifies that if they break up, what's the rules for selling the house, specifies who gets the tax deductions, specifies what happens if one of them dies. Does their family get it or does it go to their co-tenant? How does that play out? We found that this is, has been very used a lot with young couples who are buying real estate who aren't married as a way to deal with all of the issues regarding it. Irrevocable trusts. They can be created upon death or during life. Here we created an irrevocable trust during life because we needed a vehicle to own the real estate. It can, it can only, you can, an irrevocable trust is somewhat of a misnomer though. You cannot change who the beneficiaries are, nor can you lengthen the time in which they receive the money. Other than that, you can effectively amend an irrevocable trust by what is known as a merger provision, where you can merge an old trust into a new trust as long as it has the same beneficiaries and same basic depository schemes. It's a separate taxpayer, has its own ID, makes over 600 bucks a year, you file a tax return. Trusts are the worst place in the world to hold, get ordinary income. Why? Because you reach the maximum tax rate at thir of 37% at $12,500. However, it gets the favorable capital gain treatment, which is why, as an example, dropping C corporation stock into an irrevocable trust is a good thing because the only thing a trust will get is capital, will be dividends, which are treated as capital gains, and sale of the equity, which is capital gains. So if you have assets, capital assets, your common stock in your business, if you're a C Corp, using an irrevocable trust is, is, is really good. Also, can establish some creditor protection for the beneficiaries. 